residual brandy on my lips. <laughs> Oh, no. Cause a little bit of discomfort. Oh. <laughs> Plus, when the original petrol was all done with, there were still sparks flying <laughs> from the brandy. <laughs> again, it went down well, really I was, well. I bet, yeah, I bet. What a hit. And uh, oh, never God. again. Above and beyond. Totally above and beyond. <laughs> but do you see what I mean? That was yeah. the passing show. Yeah, yeah. Needs must. And you never <laughs> thought. You just thought, oh, okay, this will be all right. And no one's going to... Again, I say this. If I saw a poster and it said, we're going to make someone breathe fire who's never done it and hasn't got a clue what they're doing, I'm there. I'm in the front row. I know, but I think the whole <laughs> point of the passing show is that everybody thought it was this show that was just, you know, really rehearsed and <laughs> literally planned within an inch of its oh, life. Yeah. So when you people were arriving, they were probably leaving going, wow. <laughs> what was, did we just witness? That was, was that? Yeah, that was great. And I mean, as a kid... So, how old would I have been on the passing show? You'd have been a year. You'd have been, no, you'd have been uh, 18 months. Upwards. Yeah, more, probably. Yeah, I think because there's. Because got... you're very busy. Yes. She had a lot on. You, she had, you think, had a lot on. Yeah, I think I was about literally maybe two, three. Yeah, well, hang on, because we got Luke. Luke was a baby, so yeah. you must have been. At least two. You must have been two. And I think this is where my fascination and my complete obsession do you remember my clan collection i hated oh, it it was horrible it was weird but i think that yeah. might be because i i hung out with the clowns on the passing <laughs> show and they were literally the weirdest clowns well, i mom, think you've ever come mom across. said they were the worst clowns you've ever seen well they to me they weren't because obviously they had painted faces and i thought they were magical yeah, and incredible but imagine living on a bus as part of a circus the kids that have heard about this in school think i'm some sort of incredible icon because i actually didn't get to run away with the circus the circus ran away with me yes, that's very basically true. did you ever get up in the morning and put the wrong shoes on oh they're clown shoes they're a bit <laughs> i don't think i wore shoes oh no you didn't we didn't we didn't get to shoes no, no. i don't think i wore shoes no, you think, like shoes but you didn't like wearing them i just remember having the best breakfasts in the bus and having the best sleep ever in the bus because ronnie paid a lot of money to have it converted so that we could sleep on it well who did we get now was that alistair who was the caravan yes, restorer yes, did right. he, he lived do in all the work inside yeah the yeah. Pembroke. he i think it was him who did ronnie uh structured it he, yeah. you know, he knew exactly what he wanted he spent hours going to fishing shops and getting all the right brass attachments and yeah. lights and stuff. It, it was done spot on and it was comfy. It was an incredible And it bus. towed yeah. uh, my wagon, yeah. which was Queenie. Yeah, that's right. The fortune teller's wagon. I've that seen, I've seen, I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, well, that, that was how it was. The bus towed Queenie. So the bus was the kids and it was a kitchen, although we did yeah. mostly cook outside. And then Queenie was me and Ronnie's yeah. bit. I mean, you, it was proper life on the road. I mean... Oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah, we, we, we lived it all right. Wasn't it? And I, I and this, this is funny, because what's probably quite funny about these podcasts, what people don't realise, you're just my mum. I know you've had an amazing life, but you're just my mum, and I've not really had an awful lot of interest in all this awesome stuff you did back in the day, because... Clearly, I was way more important to you. Oh, that's really <laughs> but it's great to learn about, you yeah. know. And what, like, I didn't realise that um, my big sister was a clown. Yeah. I want to be clown. <laughs> but now I know where the clown obsession come from. The creepy... Even all my mates remember your clown collection yeah. oh, yes. from over 20 shame. years ago. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a collection to be proud of. Shame it all burnt Where, her. Wherever yeah, we... So She'd gone off it by then. You, yeah. You, yeah. You, she, she went to uni and left those clowns behind. I remember yeah, you those you sad clown faces. <laughs> oh, God. I, just went I left them for Reuben. <laughs> yeah, to haunt Reuben. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, but, uh, yes, just crazy. But uh, do, you, do you have any other memories, sis, from... I mean, you're obviously very young. Is there anything else that stands out to you? Or? No, just it's... I mean, I, I only ever remember the clowns. I don't really remember the other people a great deal. But I do remember... Um, at some point, a meeting um, the Chipperfields, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and animals 
I recollect and that animals. and animals, yeah. yeah. I recollect that. And I remember, I think we may have even gone back to see... Cherry Cottle Circus. Yeah. And I, oh, wait, yeah. Rival Circus, what's happening now? Cherry Cottle Circus. Yeah. We got involved with him. Yeah. I think we travelled with him for a bit. Yeah. Well, I just, I just remember that we were on the road and then Mum decided actually maybe I should be in school. Oh, that's a minor detail, though, school. Was it <laughs> well, not? Hmm. No, it was when we finally got off the road, which, don't forget, took a bit of doing, because we, when we finally broke down, we were in Shepparton Studios, parked outside there for a couple of months, because the engine blew up in the bus. So we had to... Yeah. Which was weird because it was an entire Victorian set at the studios. And because The Who had uh, several stages there, it was them. It was Pete, the saviour, as always. He yeah, said, well, always. you can park up there. So for at least a couple of months, we, we lived with this backdrop of the Victorian... <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, well. And there was nobody else there. Up? How am I not messed up? Well, again. Well, again, I really don't recall any of that. That was a, that was a very weird experience. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, yeah, you tell me. And then go back to the middle of and nowhere. Then, we, then when we do finally go home, yeah. and uh, you're, a, you're at least five. Yeah. A good five, you're over five, and Bill Hopkins, the local school teacher, rocked up and said, well, I think it's about time that your child, your eldest child, was in school. And I thought, what? I said, I've been teaching her. I wondered what he thought about that. But anyway, that was it, really. That was the end of uh, long periods of travelling as a family because uh, he was very... Um, strict on schooling yeah he was actually quite a crazy bloke he wasn't a bad bloke at all but i was in fear of you know the authorities yeah getting enough. on my back he was an amazing man but he was wasn't he yeah he really was he was one of those um one of those teachers that you will remember always because he had just such a lovely way about him and he stayed in the community for a long time i mean he, he, he lived did. down in hissington and he always had so much time for you and Mummy. And actually, us us kids... He was completely nuts. He was, reckon. he was, but in such an enthusiastic, oh, bombastic yeah. way. Yeah, he was. He really was. He was a great head teacher. And then when I... Well, he, he wasn't the head teacher <coughs> for, for very long. The, the head teacher I remember was Mr Williams. Don't remember him at all. No. Well, that's good, because that means you didn't ever have to get involved in my life at primary school, which means I was obviously a goody two-shoes. Clearly a goody two-shoes. <coughs> I mean, <coughs> you know, you had the perfect foundation to be a golden child. You were so, a golden child. Yeah, so when did you get the mobile studio then? Oh, Ronnie had that when he was on tour with the faces. He um, He saw one and thought, saw an airstream and thought that's what he wanted, but not for travelling in, but for recording. getting out his recording studio. So he had it shipped over from the States and got it converted. And it was amazing, a lot of uh, people use that studio. I don't know, I still <coughs> remember the smell inside. It was the most phenomenal smell. Yeah. Who, who came over and used it uh, when I was making mud pies outside? <laughs> well, we had uh, all of uh, well, quadrophenia, I'm pretty sure, was made on it. Uh, all sorts of different bands. Uh, let's have a think. I know when we were in Richmond, well, at Riverdale, it was the Blockheads. Yeah. Nice. Uh, who else? Stray Cats yeah. came because I remember oh, the Stray Cats, yeah. They were, they were fit. I was only 11. How old were you? 11. You... I could still say they were fit. Slim Jim. Yeah. And it's got a fantastic history of who's used it. 
you can tell because I'm struggling to remember yeah, you anybody were, you that's... you were clearly starstruck, Mum. Clearly, that passed me by. But, uh, yeah, lots of people did. I think pretenders did because they were around a lot. Um, and, of course, everyone that stayed with us would use it. I mean, Wonderful Night. Wonderful Tonight was recorded on the studio because it was parked outside Ronnie's studio, which was a glorified barn. And yeah, it meant that everyone could sort of sit around the fire, you know, had a fire outside and have as many berries as they wanted and chill out. And if there was something that they wanted to put down, they could do it. They could do it straight away to capture the moment. And then, of course, if they wanted to master it and do all the rest of it, uh, they could do that or they could trot up to London and hand it in to the various bods that want to make sure it's all spruced up and scrubbed up. So was that what Ron Forecast did? did that was he... Ron Forecast. Yeah, Ron yeah. Forecast. Ron Forecast. Yeah. That's what Ronnie called him, Ron. Yeah, he was made for the job. He was a total hippie, vegetarian, mm. everything you can imagine that... Uh, you had to be to take the box. You had to be really to, to be able to carry on as normal within the madness that was home. Well, he lived in one of the caravans yeah, at the back, he... didn't he? I would go and make um, digestive chocolate biscuit cakes in his caravan. Yeah. He wasn't in there, but I'd still go and make them anyway. I think I thought they were really nice, but actually I don't think they were. <laughs> really? They were mm. mud pies, so... They were... Next level up from, the mud, up from the mud pie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and do you remember Chalet Nine? <laughs> Chalet Nine. Chalet Nine was a mad caravan at, at the intersection by the duck pond. <laughs> the intersection. Pond, when you went yeah. past duck pond. Yeah. Into the cottage next door that Charlie Hart yes, was living in. That's right. And Chalet Nine was the was the. Um, was the wagon parked up there? I think somebody notable stayed in Chalet Nine. <laughs> I don't know if it was Steve Marriott, if he lasted that long after the I, bath incident. Do you know what? I can remember I somebody... Yeah, somebody has written in one of their memoirs, I think, about staying in this Chalet caravan Nine. at Ronnie Lane's yeah. farmhouse. I don't know, but Chalet Nine was well known. And, of course... Ron Forecast one was the, the green showman's yes, wagon. Yeah, it was amazing. That had beautiful cut glass yeah. windows and yeah. accoutrements. Yeah, if anybody wants to know what those caravans look like, unfortunately, they, they're, they're not um, in focus or anything, but they're on the back of um, one of the Ronnie Lane albums. Oh, that's it. Yeah. eye view of them, but you could see how many caravans there were. And as a kid, you can imagine, it was just like yeah, was just the most amazing again. playground. And when you go and visit Fishpool Farm now, as an adult, you wonder how the hell we fit everybody in such a small house. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a tiny. It house. Sounds like you spent more time outside the house, though. To be yeah, honest, we did really, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, my kids which, were which you did, being you? outdoor kids. Yeah, yeah you've got you've got a feral bunch, and you your whole life. To be fair, yeah, we haven't turned out too bad. Well, we wear shoes on our feet now, so we come a long way. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah, I have proper shoes sometimes. You have proper shoes, and Reuben has Italian handmade shoes. <laughs> what a kid. <laughs> I think the best thing about growing up there was that no point did I ever think there was anybody famous at my house. And at no point did... Well, we never had a lot of money, just saying. Yeah, well... Um, you sunk it all in the past few years. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, but you spent it all. The point is that whenever anybody came to stay, I think they just felt so totally relaxed because there wasn't all of that bollocks that goes around with yeah. being famous, famous. Or yeah, of course, yeah. which is yeah. But you, if, if you, if you're within the circle, though, it is like that, isn't it? It is normal because it is. It, for for you guys, it was normal life. Um, I f yeah. Really? Yeah, it, it, it was normal life, but it, not. But it, it was, was anything normal about it. You were. It was it completely was ragtag, and there yeah. was famous rock was stars ragtag. and musicians everywhere. But it was a magical time. Because we, the people we knew and the people we mixed around with, were a very eclectic mix. Yeah, that's what Whereas, musicians uh, are, isn't it? Yeah, but. I